On this channel, we talk a lot about no-code tools and databases. Now, one of the problems that some of our customers face is that they don't have the luxury of starting over with a brand new tool. They've got existing customer data sets, and these live in databases that they want to continue to support. And so they don't want to necessarily have to migrate all of their data into a new tool. Another issue that can arise is that sometimes companies have really large data sets. They have millions of records that they need to be able to support. And this is something that no-code tools often take advantage of. If you use their own backend databases, you have a very small, limited number of records that you can actually use in the tool. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a tool called Visual DB that attempts to solve both of these problems. Now, it's fair to say for those of you watching that this isn't going to be really a direct having the same feature set as a lot of the work management tools out there. Yes, it has forms and we can view our data in a spreadsheet-like kind of way, but it's going to have some differences. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is its pricing, because this is going to be attractive for a lot of organizations. They have both cloud-hosted and self-hosted options for this as well. So currently, I'm on the cloud-hosted options. It's $0 to get started you are going to have this thousand record limit. So you can get started for free, but most likely you'd need to upgrade. But the upgraded plan is $5 per user per month. It does have a five user minimum. So you'd end up spending $25 per month but that's still a lot more affordable than many of the other options out there. And what's crazy about this is when we're talking about the record limits, we're talking about 100,000 records displayed at one time. So there's no limit to the number of records actually in your database. That's unlimited, but you can display 100,000 records at a time. So this is virtually unheard of if you're wanting to work with really large data sets. Now, as I mentioned, you also have options for self-hosting. So there's a free plan for self-hosting. Again, this is going to be similar to the limits that we have on the paid hosted version. And then on the paid self-hosted for enterprise, essentially, they're going to charge you based on the server per month. But here what's great is that then you have an unlimited number of users. So let's hop into Visual DB. The first thing that you need to do is set up a new connection. You can see we've got a handful of different options. We do quite a bit of work in Postgres with Supabase. We can use MySQL, you've got Maria, you've got Microsoft, Oracle, SQLite. And then once that's set up, all of the data is going to be writing and reading directly to that database. Once we have that SQL connection, then we're in the database area. Here's where we can see our tables and our schema that's already set up. Because this is connected, we can actually use it to actually create new tables, add new fields. We can manage that without having to flip back and forth. So we can actually manage the schema itself directly within Visual DB. Here we've got an area for diagrams. And so you can see the different relationships. We can create these to be able to see the relationships between the different database tables. And we could click on any one of these if we want to see the schema and how they're actually interrelated. And then here we have a SQL scratch pad, and this gives us an AI feature. And this is really helpful because I don't use SQL enough of the time to remember all of the syntax. We use it a fair amount when we connect to Supabase, but again, we want to typically use AI features to help us with this. And I was able to put in just really plain English here. I was saying, hey, we've got this movies table, Find all action movies rated PG-13 or higher. In this case, I don't even remember the specific field names or column names for this. I'm just trying to see if it can find me that information. So let's go ahead and press OK. It's going to contact our AI service. And then here you can see it automatically found the table. We've got the fields that it needs, genres, action. And then we've got the content ratings. And it was able to understand when I said PG-13 or higher, it knew the context of what that meant. So that's pretty awesome on the query itself. Let's see if this works. We'll press execute. And there you go. We've got 921 rows fetched. So we can see all of the different movies that meet that content rating that are also of the action genre. And then here we have our queries. So this is going to be the SQL information where we're actually pulling back the information. And these queries are important because this is how we're going to actually populate our sheets with the data we want to interact with. When we get to the forms, we want to be able to create new records. It's going to do that via a query as well. So here we can construct new ones. Let me just show you. Oh, I don't know. We've got a musical instruments one here. And you can see that this actually we can set up related tables as well. We can add our own conditions. 
And then we can test to make sure that we're getting the right data back so that then we can summarize this in our sheets. Now, just an aside for those of you who use Airtable or similar, you're still really kind of constructing queries in a way within Airtable. You're just doing it within the sheets or the views themselves. And Airtable's handling all the magic kind of on the back end to actually query the true behind the scenes database. In Visual DB, one of the advantages of constructing our own database queries is that we can really manage the performance. And when we get to the sheets, you're going to see just how performant this really is. But before we do, we also have calculated fields. These are going to be essentially like Excel formulas where we've got a grade here. And so we can preview this formula. Let's edit it real quick. And this is going to feel like a lot of other formula or calculated field builders, where we've got access to the different fields in the database, different operators and functions to be able to create the data that we need, even if we don't want to actually store it in the database this way. So we want to take their graduation year and then determine their grade based on this data. Let's head over to our sheets. And our sheets are going to be essentially our lists or our grid views of this kind of data. Let's go ahead and open up that movies one. And then here you can see we've got this nice, really spreadsheet type view with some of the additional visualizations and validations, things that we wouldn't necessarily get as easily within Excel or Google Sheets. And here's the crazy part. So if I scroll, you can see just how many records we have going on. I can keep going down. All of this data is loaded. Notice I don't have to sit and paginate all of it. So here on the screen, as is, without grouping and filtering or anything else, we have thousands of records. We've got 5,000 records that just load super easily. And we can do this because, again, it's database data. So oftentimes, if you find yourself in spreadsheets getting bogged down and those files don't open easily, the Visual DB team has really optimized it to get that really nice performance. So that's where they're saying, hey, you can actually have data sets of up to 100,000 records that can display simultaneously on here. That's really incredible. And as you'd expect in our sheets view here, then we can choose what fields we want. We could add a filter. Let's change this to only display countries that are the USA. And we can apply that. And then let's go ahead and group this by our genre. So now you can see we've got all the action movies grouped here at the top. And then I want to sort this, let's say, by the title year. And I can click it here if I want to or sort up here. We've got some settings over on the side. We call this our design mode. We don't have as many options here in the sheets, but you'll see some more in the forms themselves. One of the things I like here is that we can add our own webhook. So if we're interacting with outside services, and we want to be able to take data that we've updated here, we can easily do that. So we could say, hey, I want to have basically a, a payload, a notification happen anytime we create a new movie record or we update a movie record, then we're going to send this data along. So you could use this with outside services like a Make or Zapier. Next, let's hop over into our forms. And from our forms, one of the things that's really awesome here is that we can generate this with AI. So I'll give it a title here, and then we'll choose from the available queries that we've already created. And all we have to say is use AI to lay out the form. We'll press continue. And then take a look at this. Because it understands the context of the different fields that we have on our tables, it's able to put them logically together in a way that makes sense. So we didn't have anything to tell it this is an address and this is personal information, but it's able to create that form automatically with its AI features. So that makes it nice if you've got a lot of fields, you don't have to spend the time dragging and reordering and moving that around on the screen. So that means if you have a ton of different fields, the AI is just gonna manage that on the screen without you having to do it yourself. One of the things that's really cool about this is that when we have our data actually in this form, we can display it in here as well. So a lot of times people think of forms as only being able to create new records and then we can't really view our data that way. But here, notice we can actually iterate. So we've got our customer number two, Sarah, and then we go on to Michael Brown, customer number three. So it's really helpful, especially if you do a lot of data intake to view your data in the form itself. 
Now, another thing this is really good at is if you scroll down here, remember how we talked about adding those related tables as part of our queries? That's what this is for. So anytime you have line items that you need to manage as part of your data, it can do that automatically without a lot of additional setup. Let's go ahead into our design mode in our settings. And here we can add our headers. We could add a logo. So here I was able to add my own branding and logo to it. Let's go ahead and change the background to more of a bluish color. There we go. So we've got some branding things that we can do. We can also add form rules. And so this is really handy if you want to say, hey, initially we have to identify the customer information in this form. And then only then is when we're going to actually ask for financial information. So we could say, hey, let's take one of the individual customer fields and set that equal to, or basically instead of equal to, we'd probably say if that data is not null, and that's when we could enable this. When this condition is satisfied, then we've got options to either disable fields clear and disable fields or hide them. So we've got some of this business logic baked directly into our forms. And as we could in our sheets, we can add web hooks here and we can also enable this to make it public if we want to have a form that people can publicly submit information into. And then to make it easier for our users, we've got individual field settings as well. So I can click on this risk rating which right now, because it's just a database and it's just a text value, people can essentially enter in anything that they want. We want to have validation on the front end where we can actually choose our available values. So I can edit this and we can say, hey, choose from our existing values or we could give it the values specifically or we could query it. Maybe we have the values stored in another table. So let's change this to offer existing values, press OK. And then maybe we want to give an option for our default values. So we'll say by default, we'll have this be low whenever people are entering new data. And then out of our design mode, now we can change this between high, medium, and low so that it's easier to be able to actually interact with that data. The last part that we have to talk about is reports because you have these huge data sets. So you want to be able to see some data visualizations on top. So sometimes there's certain kinds of data visualization that I want to be able to see in no-code tools, but we don't always have options. One of those would be a map. And so if I want to see our data actually visualized in a map, look, we can get down to the actual county data here. We're looking at population. So this is one of many visualizations we can choose from. Another option here would be a tree map, which again is a little bit more sophisticated of a visualization than we've come to expect in other no-code, low-code kinds of tools. And so just so you get an idea, here's the different kinds of visualizations that we have to choose from. So if you're someone who has really large data sets or you've got your existing databases and you want to have an interface layer over the top of it with reporting and forms and sheets, then VisualDB is a good fit for you. Go ahead and check it out today at visualdb.com.